Hi, <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Nice, nice to see you, nice to see you. Yeah. Is Dr. Shakila, you are? Yeah, yeah you okay. very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And we have talked virtually, and this is the first time we are talking face-to-face -face online. Thank yes. you for joining. Uh, shall we go ahead, ma'am? Yes, sure. Yeah. Before we start this session, I would consider this as a great honor to introduce Professor Noel Haniza Sharmi. Uh, Professor Sharmi has completed her BSc Mathematics, MA Mathematics, and PhD Mathematics, all from State University of New York at Binghamton, Binghamton, New York. And she is a member of various professional bodies like Malaysian Mathematical Sciences Society, lifetime member, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer, Engineer IEEE, PUTM Academic Staff Association, and UTM Toastmakers Club. At present, Professor Sharmini holds the position of a Professor, Department of Mathematical Sciences, Faculty of Science, University of Technology, Malaysia. Previously, she also worked as Associate Director, Global Strategy and Engagement, UTM International, and UTM International University of Technology, Malaysia. Also, Acting Director, UTM International, University of Technology, Malaysia. She has uh, nearly 39 scholars have successfully completed. Sorry for the interruption, ma'am. Yeah, now I was uh, mentioning about your great achievement. 39 scholars have successfully completed their PhD under her able supervisorship. She has published more than 65 papers in ESCI Web of Science journals and nearly 55 papers in Scopus. She has completed 400 projects and has shoot two more uh, ongoing projects in her hand. Thank you very much, Professor Sharmin for joining us today. In spite of a busy schedule, she has accepted our invitation and graced this function. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. So let us join us, join hands together to welcome Professor Noor Hansina Sharmin. And we look forward to listening to her talk on the emergence of DNA's, DNA splicing in industrial applications. Professor Sharmin, please take over the session. Thank you very much, Dr. Shakila. And thank you very much for this invitation. And uh, good afternoon from Malaysia. Good morning still there in India. It's my great pleasure to accept your invitation and also to special guests over there. I wish I was there, but it's okay. Maybe one time I will go and visit your university. Let me share my screen. Yeah. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah, very much. All right, okay. So when I see the poster, I'm so proud to be among all these invited speakers from all over the world. And the same as Prof. Tiling Zhang just now, uh, you want to share about your university? I also want to share a little bit. So when I look at your, this is my first time uh, looking at this a topic of international conference of progress in mathematics towards industrial applications, which is very, very interesting. So I'm thinking like, what can I share? So I come up with this topic as mentioned by Dr. Shakila just now, the emergence of DNA splicing in industrial applications. How many of you, I, have, I cannot see you now <laughs> because I'm sharing this slide, have been to Malaysia? Dr. Shakila, many of them yes, or not? Yes, very much I have been, I have been. Okay, okay, that's good. So that's where Malaysia is in the world map. I've been one time to Aligarh Muslim University, actually last year, <laughs> to India. So that is our distance. You are all very, very welcome to come to Malaysia and to visit us at UTM about probably four plus hours. And now it's two o'clock. And uh, 2 p.m., 2.08. So th that is the difference. And as of our location, University Technology Malaysia, uh, when you've been to Malaysia, which part of 
uh, the state you were there. Yeah. Like, Please, I have a visiting team. University KL, of right? Yeah. Everyone visit KL, but not many visit Johor. So we have two campuses. One in KL, just very near to the Twin Tower. Another one is in Johor, which is just across Singapore. So you might be in the area. So you can fly through Kuala Lumpur or you can fly, fly through Singapore and just across train or bus, lots of... Uh, and as our faculties in University Technology Malaysia, I want to take this opportunity, as I mentioned to Dr. Shakila, that we can actually collaborate not only for this conference, but later on for the whole department or the university. So we are one, actually, UTM is one of the five research universities in Malaysia and one of the 20 public universities. So we have 12 faculties, although our focus is in engineering. So we have multidisciplinary research also, like mentioned from the previous uh, speaker, but I'm uh, in Faculty of Science over here, which is one of the 12. So mainly there are many engineering, but we also have social science and we also have uh, science, mathematics here. We also have others, bio biology, physics, and chemistry. And as of our department, we call it Department of Mathematical Sciences in the faculty. We have around 50 academic members with around close to 500 undergraduate students, close to 200 postgraduate students. And we do have also research centers and research groups. And we do have, sorry, we do have uh, postgraduate programs, masters and PhD. Uh, the PhD is by research, but masters we have by research and also mixed mode. And our undergraduate programs, uh, Bachelor of Science with Honours or Industrial Mathematics. And we encourage our students to uh, get, to be able to know each other. I mean, from abroad. So some students went for research attachment. You can also send your student to our university for a research attachment. So this kind of thing that we can do together. And this is the research areas or academic panels in our department. I belong to algebra which is in algebra and analysis. We also have applied math, numerical and computational, operation research and statistics. And this is academic panels. We also belong to a research group. And my research group is called applied algebra and analysis group, which we normally call it as a cube G. So I joined the uh, UTM more than 30 years ago, 32 years this year. <laughs> And as mentioned by Dr. Shakila just now, I graduated from this university uh, in my bachelor's mathematics and for PhD. What I'm going to talk today is about DNA splicing system. I'm not sure if uh, you are familiar with this, but we see the diversity of mathematical application in various scientific concepts. So we see we also use mathematics in modeling complex biological process. And one area for this interdisciplinary collaboration is in DNA splicing. So what is actually DNA splicing? It's a basic biological process in manipulating genetic information. And we use the technique of recombinant DNA. And these DNA molecules relies on restriction enzymes, which I will explain later. So my presentation today explore the idea of DNA splicing and also some concepts involved. I will share a little bit about the very fundamental mathematical framework behind this DNA splicing. And I want to show a little bit about our um, wet lab and how do we model the real thing into from the lab and do it in the lab and show our model. And I will share a little bit about what we do in, uh, uh, in the industrial application, including how we use graphical user interface, GUI. And finally, towards the end, I will share a little bit about how we do DNA splicing with graph, and this is what uh, we are still doing now. Okay, I'm sure everyone is familiar with DNA structure. Somehow, we took biology, like here we took in high school. So the structure of DNA has nucleotides, and under that we have phosphate group and the base, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. So remember this, the A, C, G, and T. This is actually the main part of our mathematical model. 
and the structure of a DNA, the Watson Creek complementary, they pair together. C has to be paired with G and A has to be paired with T. That's, that's the rule. So we look at the recombinant DNA technology. We're familiar with the gene for antibiotic resistance uh, and how they sometimes mix all the genes and create something new. So we look at this part and we were also interested in looking at various applications of recombinant DNA technology. Number one, genetically modified products. So people have do this for flowers. If you have plants at a house, fruits, vegetables, crops, animals, and uh, there's research on therapeutic products. Uh, everyone got vaccine from the COVID uh, last time. Uh, the growth hormones, we have antibodies, anti-cancer, recombinant protein. Uh, the third one is diagnosis of like gene therapy, monitoring device, therapeutic strategies, and CRISP. And the last one in energy application, all the biodiesel, biohydrogen, bioethanol. This is kind of a recombinant DNA technology and with the various application. Now, as of our part, we look at the, the broader part is the DNA computing. So this is emerged in more than 20 years now, is the intersection of biology, computer science, mathematics, and also engineering. And particularly, I'm actually, when I graduated from my PhD, it's under totally pure mathematics. But I'm also interested to see because this involves also pure mathematics in theoretical uh, uh, computer science and also under discrete mathematics. So this is the NA splicing system. Um, the original mathematical modeling was first fine and defined and found by Professor Tom Head, which is the professor from my university last time. And he introduced this mathematical model of the generative capacity of a biological system containing DNA molecules in the presence of appropriate enzymes. So I'm very, very interested to look at his work, although my PhD is in pure uh, mathematics in group theory, but we can see somehow the interdisciplinary research that he's doing. So we together uh, collaborate and apply for a research grant, and I'm able to invite him to visit uh, UTM that is like almost 20 years ago. And uh, unfortunately he passed away a few years ago and started with having, having students together. So these two are my PhD students who's interested to do this research. And he become the external co-supervisor of the student and managed to invite him over and also send these two students for research attachment in the US. Okay, now how do we model the DNA splicing? So you look at this side on mathematics and formal language, and you look at the other side, DNA in, in the model. So in the mathematics and formal language, we have like alphabets. Our alphabets is like A until Z. So let's say the alphabets are H, N, S, M, and all those. We also have strings. We put al alphabets into strings, so you can actually write my name, Noor and Haniza and Sarmin. And with somehow grammar, or we call it a rule, you have to put Noor together with Haniza to be my first name. Uh, or you put my first name and my last name. And it creates a language, what we call a language, my full name. So we model that in DNA in which the A, C, G, and T, when A combined with C and G with T, we write as small letters. So A, C, G, and T on the right-hand side. And then with all the DNA sequence, because our DNA is a long string, so we have all the sequences. And splicing means we splice, we cut and recombine. And the rule that we use is using Watson Creek grammar. And the language that we have is what is the outcome after we splice, we cut, and we recombine. So I'm uh, sharing about one string. You see on the left, G, A, A, T, C, T, C, T, G, T, A, A, T. You rotate, and you will see the same thing here. G, A, A, T is over here. So you rotate 180 degree and also the other one, and you cut, 
and the one that that the dot 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 is where you cut that is the rule and then they will recombine and we will have the language of the model at the end so this is how we get a splicing language so following the rule giving a string and the rule depends on the restriction enzymes so what are actually restriction enzymes is an enzyme that cut the double stranded or single stranded dna at specific recognized nucleotide sequence known as restriction sites. So this one, they will cut at a certain place. So we know that this certain enzyme can only cut if they found this A, V, G, and so on. So these two restriction enzymes is echo R1, that's the name. Another one is MV1, that is the name. So you will see this will cut whenever they see GC, AT, and so on. And this one will cut over there. So when we put them inside, they will cut exactly there. The other one, it will cut exactly there. And then they recombine and they create a new DNA sequence. We also uh, look at many different types of DNA splicing system. First by head splicing system in 87, and then another researcher introduced another splicing system, and then Pixton introduced another splicing system later in the same year, actually. And then Good and Pixton, uh, actually she's a, a PhD student of Professor Head and Pixton. And then my student working together with Good uh, create one, uh, the, another splicing system. Uh, and another student of mine from Iran, actually, uh, she's looking into fuzzy splicing system, like about 10 years ago, almost. So these are different, different types of splicing systems that are available. They are differ in the way that we put or we look at the initial string, the first string that we look at, and the rule. The rule means the... Uh, restriction enzymes and how do we look at the rule together. I'm not going to go into detail, but these are just to share some uh, types of uh, uh, system. Now, we try to see what is actually really happening. I've never been actually to the biology lab in the university except for biology 101 or in my high school, but we contacted some biologists in UTM and also in uh, US to look at how we can do this theore uh, theoretical work in the lab. So the we call it the wet lab or wet experiment of splicing system in which we have just uh, the this little thing with uh, the, the DNA string inside and we try to look at how we can create and choose the, the string, and then which kind of initial string to start with, and which kind of uh, restriction enzymes that we put. So then the resultants, we can take photo, then we call it a gel photo, and we can actually predict beforehand and see whether this is exactly like what we predicted. So I'm showing you the uh, prediction we say we want to find this initial uh, DNA molecule. You can find from the, uh, the they call it in the uh, book of lab with also many strings. So you can choose specific one and you can purchase that. So we choose this DNA uh, segment of uh, plants from this length and we want this, this long. And this, uh, initial molecule, we know that it has one cutting site. We don't want to have many cutting sites, so we can just cut once, and we have to choose which restriction enzyme that need to cut uh, this string. So we had to choose that, and then we had to calculate the length of all of these uh, sequences. We have this um, initial molecule, and this is where the enzymes cut. If you see this triangle, this is actually the cutting site. So this is what we have, all the initial molecule with all this length. So they call it 160 base pairs. With the help of the biologists, we can uh, determine which one, and then we can have to make sure that it has this specific uh, cut or, or the place to cut. 
And then with this, uh, we tried to find the, the language uh, of this uh, splicing system. So with all this calculation, this is very theoretical that we do. And we can see, even if you live in and it goes cut and cut and recommend again, and what we expected of the DNA string. Now, on the left, this is what we expected. If we call it the ladder, and if you look at the uh, lane, this is after uh, many minutes, like when it's zero minute, we start with just this string. And then after 30 minutes, it start to cut, and then 60 minutes, and then two hours. On the right, my right, <laughs> our right, right? This is the, uh, the photo, photo gel that we take in the lab. So you see that exactly this, what we predicted here, is what happened in the lab. So we, we, we have been helping the biologists to predict and they don't have to spend this much time because it takes a while even to purchase the initial string, like two months, and then purchase the enzymes and then go to the lab and do the PCR and all those. And it took us like probably two months or the first time is three months because we are not really sure of how to do it. But after that, it can be easily done um, for, um, in, in using mathematical model. This is the second one. Uh, we tried to use different enzymes and the prediction or the photogel is exactly what uh, we predicted. The one that I circle is the one that we want to see in the photogel. So after 30 minutes, 60 minutes, even after two hours, and then if you leave it even overnight, it will give us uh, the last one in the last lane. I'm uh, just sharing some photos that we did in the lab. So this, sorry, this is my student, uh, my PhD student, and this is my master student, and this is the biologist. Uh, at that time, he was also a master student in UTM. So we did this uh, in the lab with the help of the professor and the student. And then um, we want to see if we can do two different types of enzymes and different type of DNA splicing with different model. So I sent my PhD student, Yohani, to uh, Binghamton, to New York, and then to Towson University, in which uh, we have uh, Dr. Elizabeth Lon is now working over there in that lab. And this is uh, Professor Tom Head. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth was his PhD student. Yohani was my PhD student and uh, professor biology in the in the uh, Binghamton University is also there. So this is uh, Yohani doing all the sequencing, uh, choosing the initial string. And then we did another one with different enzymes. And this is uh, Fariba from Iran, who's studying in UTM. And at this time, uh, Dr. Dr. Friedaus, he graduated from his master's and uh, he further and become uh, a lecturer in UTM and he's still working with us until now. And uh, 2015, we start with a different, another type of model of DNA splicing. And this is the, the latest one. Uh, she did the one with the palindromic meaning that we choose exactly uh, the string when you read from the left, it's the same when you read from the right, the palindromic sequence. So this is actually during the pandemic that we are able to use the lab uh, in 2020, end of 2020, and she already graduated. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that I want to share a little bit on uh, how do we do this industrial application in uh, computer science. We look at also, if you're familiar with computer science and, and uh, for formal language, we have discrete math, we have also automata. So automata theory is normally the study of abstract machine as well as computational problem. Uh, in the computer science, uh, we have this 
automaton de described by the state diagram in which when you have the initial one and you have the loop and then you have the final one. So we try to see what can we do this, uh, our language, our DNA splicing in automata diagram. So this is an example of our splicing system S with the initial string B and C is how we put our uh, rules. And then the I is the, the, the string. And then we have this rule B that uh, on behalf of the restriction enzyme, and we can choose our uh, uh, second uh, enzyme to be empty or another enzyme. So this is, for example, the automata for the splicing system for this system S. You can see this initial string AGGA here, and CTAG here, and TCT. And this is already cut at CTAG here. So this is already cut. And that is how we put them in the uh, automata diagram. Okay, and then we start to see whether we can make things simpler by creating graphical user interface or GUI for our DNA splicing system. So there is a program that we call it DNA splicing language generator or DNA splice gen. We just received the um, what we call the copyright for this. We haven't approached any industry yet, uh, still ongoing, but this program is created using Microsoft Visual uh, Studio to, to develop the GUI for the DNA splicing system involving palindromic or non-palindromic rules, the rules that you can read the same left or right or not. So for this one, you can insert the initial string, and then you insert the cleavage pattern means where you want to cut of the enzyme. And then you can just click compute and you will get the results or you can clear to reset this interface. Now, uh, if for example, that is the string, I'm not sure if you can really read this, but we put the place where maximum now is just two enzyme. So you put the restriction enzyme where it should cut, and then you have the boxes indicate where the cutting site. And when we click, there is this algorithm to see whether this is the right one or you have the cutting place. And it states the number of where. Just now, when we do the lab work, we make sure that there is only one cutting site. So this one is said only one. So the algorithm will generate all the splicing language. And then we improve our DNA splice gen by putting additional features involving uh, two rules. So you can insert two restriction enzyme and they will display messages if maybe you put more than two cutting sites. It will say no, we can only do maximum of two cutting sites and it will uh, notify you that the input is incorrect. So we still improving this. As I mentioned, we haven't contacted yet. We want to improve this further. So we just get the copyright first for this. Uh, the, the last part of my sharing today is about uh, splicing on graph theory. I'm sure you are very familiar with graph theory, right? Mathematical structure. We have uh, two sets. One is the vertices and one is the edges. Uh, this is actually, I choose the map of Malaysia in which from Kuala Lumpur to Shakila, you can fly to all other interesting cities in Malaysia, including the East Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak. And uh, also we are all doing graph theory today. Like the one vert uh, vertex is your place over there, your hall, and I'm one of the vertices and we are connected through Zoom. So all this is very interesting actually, so much application in social media and others. So we're thinking, how can we connect spicing system in a graph theory? It has been connected by Fron in 1995, in which they want to describe, he described the NA splicing in the form of graph instead of just one dimensional string. So for DNA splicing system, we focus on the recombination of DNA molecules. And then he uh, introduced graph splicing system, which he emphasized on the cuts at the edges of the graph and how we can reconnect. 
So in the NS pricing system, we also have the restriction enzymes. And in graph pricing system, we define and describe in the graph pricing scheme, and we call it graph pricing rule. And you can find this. Um, uh, uh, Shakila, I already uh, share with you this slide, and I will put in my website. I, later, I will share so you you can get access uh, to all the papers. And now uh, for the graph pricing rule, for example, I give one example. We have the uh, uh, enzyme ACI1. So this is the uh, enzyme with the cutting side. And this is how we put the string and we put the, the string together and the dot dot is where it can cut. So we have this model in which that is the string and then we put with the enzymes and we put the edges and where they are cut. Okay, that is how they are cut. And uh, we also are looking into a semi-graph representation of DNA molecule. And we are trying to see how we can do end cut splicing, not only one time cut, but we can do end cut splicing. And how we can do one cut and then another cut, and then look at the two components of end cut splicing. And we want to uh, generate this. So these are just uh, sharing some parts that uh, we are doing right now. My PhD student, one of them is working on this one and in looking of this uh, graph and cut splicing. So when N is one, for example, we do one cut splicing. So you just cut here once, and then you will get two parts of this graph. If you do two, two uh, cut splicing, meaning this part and this part, there are two of them, you will get this subgraph. And then for the next three cut and so, and so on and so forth. And you want to see the characteristic or the properties of this end cut splicing. We, we, we can see that end cut splicing will cut n plus two number of edges because it will leave all the left hand side and the right hand side that never will be cut. And then n plus two edges inside will be cut. Uh, with this end cut splicing. Uh, in future research, we also are interested to see how the theoretical DNA-based computer model for food authentication process, in which food authentication using DNA and other methods, uh, there's people start doing this, but we haven't really go into the, the depth. Uh, something that we can actually collaborate with the food industry. So other methods have been used. We are still uh, looking into this. I want also to share some of uh, my publications in this area. If you are interested, uh, sorry, they are in my website, uh, people.utm.my slash Niza Sarmin, and then you can see everything. Okay, the, the last part, um, when you put, just put Niza Sarmin, you will see everything, and then you can choose uh, general papers. So most of my papers are there. First, uh, about the Watson Creek Automata. I shared before about how we uh, do this in using Automata. So you can see that uh, how we apply in the very first place DNA splicing in Watson Creek Automata, and how do we do these models in uh, DNA computing. And if you want to see what different kinds of splicing system, we also have the review paper that uh, under this. We also have different languages in which we call adult and limit language. So adult and limit language means that one is stopped and it will never be cut again. So it's stopped. Another one is it will keep on changing and changing. Uh, this is more papers on the types of splicing system in which I didn't share this, but there are many other uh, different types like simple splicing system, non-simple splicing system, persistent splicing systems, and lots of other kind of splicing system. So just sharing uh, some of the papers. Uh, we haven't really got into the detail, but if you are in fuzzy, there are also fuzzy splicing system. We started with my 
a PhD student, Dr. Fariba from Iran, but then she graduated and then she is uh, got scholarship from school. So now she's working at a school and she couldn't get around to continue this. So hopefully in the future, uh, somebody will take up and do uh, something with the fuzzy splicing system, which is also very interesting. Uh, one of my uh, PhD students, he did uh, look at weighted splicing system and he was working with uh, uh, some researchers from engineering uh, where uh, he looks into communication, satellite, but we haven't really gone into uh, the details uh, this, uh, still ongoing, in which he looked into just one-sided and two-sided and the generative power of the splicing system. We also interested to see how we can connect probability with splicing system. So there are some papers on characteristic of probabilistic splicing system by my PhD student uh, Maturi in many of her papers. And towards the end, we also uh, wanna connect with groups. So we have some papers about characterization of uh, splicing languages because it's strings, right? You can connect with a set of groups over permutation groups, over alternating groups. And then she also was interested to see not only splicing system, but there is another system called sticker system. So there are quite a number of papers on uh, sticker system also. Uh, Dr. Maturi is not attached to another uh, university in Malaysia. So uh, Dr. Shakila and all over there, if you are interested to be connected to any mathematician in Malaysia, uh, you, I can help actually. Uh, some of them, they are my students in many universities in Malaysia. Even some, like you want to find a statistician from other university or from UTM, uh, just let me know. Uh, this is about the limit language in splicing system. And uh, this student look at the uh, first order and we have second order a limit language. He is still doing it until now. And um, this one is how the cut never ends and how the cut can end. Uh, he's looking at this. This one is the one I mentioned that she looked into the palindromic restriction enzyme in which when you read the restriction enzyme from left and right, the cutting place is palindromic or not. And she's also looking into one and two uh, types of this uh, and also went to the left. This is some work by, um, he's still ongoing, my PhD student, uh, on the end cut splice a semigraph in splicing system. And we also want to see uh, the complement on the complete graph and also many others properties of the splice graph and end cut uh, graph. Uh, this one is very, uh, the, the one that this master student uh, by Dr. Maturi uh, did something on properties of bounded addition. Uh, fuzzy splicing system. So focusing on only one type of the splicing system, only simple, uh, but fuzzy. I also would like to share, uh, actually, I brought splicing system into Malaysia. So there are not no other researchers other than our group who's doing this splicing system in Malaysia. But we're also number one in Asia. And uh, in the world, also, we have quite uh, others, but we are number eight in the world for this splicing. Um, sharing some of our active collaborators, we have one collaborator, Dr. Shazot from uh, UAE. He's also a co-supervisor for some of my PhD students. We couldn't get the student to go for attachment. Only when he was in Malaysia, in University Putra, I sent some students for attachment. But when we went, he went back to UAE, there's COVID and the students graduated. So uh, we couldn't get. And Dr. Alfie from Indonesia, she is also interested in doing, she's from the computer science. So we are very interested to collaborate. And she came to UTM for a research visit. 
under the Indonesia Mathematical Science Society. They give some fundings for her to attach with me. And I have another actually under group theory. So this is what we can actually do if any of you are interested in this research. Dr. Zhang uh, shared about the collaborators, right? I also have this map of my collaborators uh, around the world. Um, some in the USA, quite a number of my students and external co-supervisors and researchers from Iran and Iraq. Uh, some others, they are my PhD students who graduated and went back to Afghanistan, UAE, Qatar, Libya, Saudi. Uh, we also had a Professor Subramaniam now in UK, but he was in U USM, uh, also our uh, collaborator here. And from uh, Italy, my student from Nigeria, some from South Africa. I have Dr. Suresh from India that collaborate with me, but not under splicing for others. When I also have some students from uh, Pakistan, also collaborate with an uh, engineer from South Korea and, and my student from Taiwan. And also recently, we have a, quite a number of collaborators from Indonesia. I'm open. I'm, I'm really interested to work more from researchers uh, from India. I would like Dr. Shakila and all to take this opportunity to, to invite all of you to our next seminar next year. It is called International Seminar on Mathematics in Industry, which will be held on 9 to 11 September in Kuala Lumpur. If you take this website, you can see the details from the website. So my... Um, uh, I, I, I send my regards from my director and the uh, director also of SIAM. SIAM is the Center of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. We have that center in UTM, which collaborate very close together with Oxford uh, uh, the, under the, their industrial uh, research. With that, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shakila, again. And this is my email. Feel free to send me an email. I will upload this uh, slide very soon in my website. So you can uh, copy the address. Uh, you can also connect with me in my LinkedIn or using Niza Sarmin. And also I have some sharing in my YouTube, uh, also Niza Sarmin. With that, thank you very much. I pass back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Professor Sharmin, for uh, taking us to the world of the emergence of DNA splicing in industrial applications. The journey was wonderful and fascinating. Thank you very much for your excellent, elaborate, and fantastic presentation. And we are always open for the collaboration with your university. We will keep in touch with you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the invitation. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, shall we have a question and answer session, please? Yes, if anyone wants to ask any questions, I'm open. Yes. Participants, uh, anyone is having any doubts, queries, questions, or uh, any future prospectives you can discuss with the professor? Sharmi, she is with yes. us. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Professor. Good afternoon. Uh, we have seen that uh, graph theory collaboration with the splicing. Uh, you have applied it for complete graph and cycle graph and also for uh, uh, I think uh, some other graph also. But uh, I want to know whether it can be applied for all such graphs or okay. uh, in particular mm -hmm. bipartite graph. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see how how uh, the the question arises when I mention that we apply we don't apply for certain type of graph we do the other way around we don't start with the graph and then go to the splicing 
we start with the splicing and then we get the graph. So from the real world application, this, because these strings, they become the vertices and how they connected, they become the edges. So you see, once you model into graph, what happened? When you cut and you recombine, what happened to the graph? It might get to be a complete graph. It might be some other graph. That's another way that you probably can do isomorphism of this graph to another known graph in graph theory. So we start from the modeling into getting a graph, making sure how you can get the vertices and edges to be for the graph, and then you see what happened. So you, it, it's not like from complete graph, you can get back to here. It's not the other way around. I hope I answer your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. You are in graph theory? Yes, yes. Oh, OK, OK. I also have other papers in graph theory. So you, if you're interested, you just uh, visit my website and, and just 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 contact me sure. if you're interested in any any anything with graph. <laughs> sure, thank you. Thank you. I, I don't. I have one more doubt also. The, uh -huh. It's like a specified uh, shape. Uh -huh. uh, so should it be applied in the same way for uh, every every uh, aspect, or can it be modified? For for what what is modified? I, Initially, we were seeing for DNA, and later we were applying it for various aspects, right? I, I'm sure you can apply. Yeah, there are lots of things that you can apply. The one that I mentioned about um, looking uh, with certain gr uh, groups, also we are looking into certain rings. So there are many, many things that you can do, actually. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Yeah. As you said that uh, you are working on a reverse order, right? You are first slicing and then you are coming for a graph. Right? So have you done any, means, uh, any characterization of some graphs which can be uh, sliced, which can be done in this? Or some kind of characterization is there? Yeah, yeah. Um. I think it has something to do with the previous uh, question also. Uh, I think it can be done. If you have certain graph, can you model it back to the the strings, right? And do, because from graph, we, ha we know many properties of graph. Uh, mm -hmm. From uh, the, I, I forgot, I, I didn't get your name, the, the one asking before. You mentioned about complete graph. If we can get, something complete graph go back to splicing i'm sure it will be very very interesting but we haven't looked into going back from that to splicing and get the right uh string that attached to it then you can do a lot <laughs> yeah because graph theory the known uh graph uh, have many uh, the 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 results of of properties and others have been done by so many why not you just choose one that you can map and go back to your problem, right? It's a very good idea, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we haven't we haven't done any. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, Professor Sharmin. We salute your expertise and experience. Because of your wonderful experience, you have taken this conference to the next level. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, always we are very open for the collaboration. We will meet you someday, maybe physical or virtual. Yes, yes. You are yeah. all welcome to come and visit yeah. us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you are also most welcome to SRM. Okay. And, and don't forget our yeah. seminar. If you are interested, you can oh. join next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope that you found this conference as rewarding as we found 
the interaction with you. Thank you very much, ma'am. On behalf I will of try and I will try and attend tomorrow the closing. Yeah. Thank you very much. And on behalf of the participants and the management, I wholeheartedly extend my warmest thank you and gratitude to Professor Dr. Noor Hanisa Sharmi for her excellent presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. So with your permission, shall I move on? Yes. Thank you. And for the kind information of the participants now, we are breaking for lunch from 12.30 to 1.30. And in the afternoon session, we are having very quite interesting talks lining up. At 1.30 to 2.30, Professor Peter, Peter Kova, Department of Applied Mathematics, VSB, Technical University of Australia, Czech Republic is joining with a topic and application of complete graph decomposition in parallel computing. And then immediately next year, Professor Iliu Liu, 